it's great to have somebody. That's really awesome. Um, I brought Lucy today. I bring her a lot, and today, if you could just hold a special feeling thought for her, she got a very bad report on her platelet count yesterday, which we're hoping it was an error, but um, I'll find out more later from the from the lab. So she had she nearly died in August, and so she's kind of been on the ropes since then. But she she looks pretty happy, so. And now Jackie's doing her magic touch. <laughs> Jackie did a, um, a Distance. animal whisperer session <laughs> with her where she got in touch with Lucy's energy. So she was able to tell me kind of how Lucy was feeling. It was about two weeks ago when I was a little concerned. And I can't tell you what a relief that is. And um, it was interesting to find out more about Jackie's many, many talents. So. Um, without further ado, so my name is Dana Rogers, and I'm a professional photographer. I came, this is probably my, I guess my second or third career. My roots are really in communications and marketing and business strategy. Um, so that's kind of what I bring to my photography and my visuals. I'm very interested in photography to support business and photography to help build business. In addition to doing other types of photography, family photography, which I'll show you a little bit about. So one of the things I wanted to talk about were some buzzwords you may have heard lately, and it's called visual storytelling. It's kind of the latest talk about how to present your company. And it goes beyond words, obviously. Rob talks a lot about how we need to always go beyond words. I and mean, if you think about it, think of how much more a photo can tell you than a paragraph. And also think for a second, I'm going to give you some statistics, but think for a second how when you're searching through, for example, social media, what catches your eye? Is it the word or is it the photo? So um, I wanted to a long way show my work. Um, this is somebody you might recognize. And you know, the story this tells to me is that he's part of a team and that the team has some balance in it, really. And they all look like they work together really well. They're rooted in the community here. I see by where they're located. So, um, pretty good photo. Thanks, Dan. About 20 pounds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Fatherhood. <laughs> so, and this photo is another member of our group. Um, and this is another story where Barbie obviously is always seeking to find out what the homeowner's tastes are and how to bring her expertise and coordination skills to make people the most comfortable they can possibly be in their home. And so we really wanted to show her in her studio, which looks a little different now probably. <laughs> it was completely flooded. But um, here she is with a swatch. And I think this really tells a story about who she is. To me, she looks very um, helpful, understanding, but also look how coordinated she is, even with the swatch. <laughs> Um, I can't overstate how first impressions are it, and so much now, first impressions are made over the internet. And think, if you think it's not true, think about how many new prospects you might meet with. Have they already gone online to see if you have a website? Have they already checked out what you look like? If you're meeting somebody for the first time at lunch, do you have to describe what you look like, or do they already know? They kind of do, because they've seen your photo. Maybe they've seen it on your email, which I use to put on my email, or maybe they've seen it on social media, or maybe they've gone to look for it on your website. I just did a whole shoot with a company called Navigant, and I went on LinkedIn and I pulled out each person's headshot so that when they came to my door, I could recognize them. And they all had them, so think about that. If you want to learn more about your clients, you can reverse the process and go find out about them. <laughs> this is a very mature. <laughs> so the story here is, you know, we see this guy on a weekly basis or semi bi-weekly basis, and he had a specific challenge, which is that he felt he looked too young in his photos, in person, what have you, and he wanted to put a bolder presence online. And so we took a series of photos. This was one of his selects to help him. Garner, I think, the respect that his talent and skills 
deserve. So we want to give him a little bit of gravitas. I've never seen him wear a suit coat, ever. <laughs> <laughs> but this photo does that, you know, and most of his business is done by phone, and so he, never, he often doesn't see his clients in person, but this gift helps them understand that he's serious about what he does, which I don't think anyone would have a quibble with. He's very serious. Um, so everybody's heard about the paleo diet, right? It's, it relies upon kind of where we've come from as animals to human beings to, to determine what's best for our bodies. And the idea that some of the things that we need are rooted way back in time. And one of the things about survival is you have to know what's going on in your environment. And so we as humans are similarly programmed to look and see a picture. And visuals engage better, they just do. Um, if I were to write a paragraph about what this photo says, would it carry the same feeling for you? This is, um, the story behind this photo is that these two, she just adopted this dog mm -hmm. that morning. Mm -hmm. And so they were trying, they were getting to know each other a little bit. And as you might imagine, things worked out pretty well. <laughs> like love at first sight. Yeah, his, his name is Chase and he's real sweet. So how much faster does the human brain process visuals? 60,000 times. So not only do we get more information, but we grok it much more quickly. And this doesn't just mean a photograph. I mean, I should say that it can also include things like graphs and uh, any other type of visual you can create, an illustration certainly. So, <laughs> Rob as Santa, right? Well, you have to see it to really understand. So we did this. We That's did actually the real color of his beard. He dies. <laughs> he, so he's. <laughs> we were kind of here last fall. Just so yeah. 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 This was a pretty, a pretty big fun one. Oh my and who is this? <laughs> <laughs> perfectly captures the spirit of this animal, who is always just, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do for you? <laughs> I took this um, in December, I think. Yep. We were working on some holiday photos of this beautiful family who had just adopted a dog, so we wanted to get them in their home. That's a gorgeous picture. Do a photo that could really... <coughs> we put the dog in the picture, you'll notice, because your eyes are drawn to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a great picture of all that. Yeah. The dog actually was amazing at posing when I went back and looked at the photos. Because usually, you know, it's more like a white. Well, you guys all met, buddy, at your house. I missed that part. <laughs> so here's another really stunning statistic: ninety-three percent of communication is nonverbal. This photo has a story. <laughs> Barbara, do you want to tell the story? <laughs> well, last, a year ago, January, um, my other half found out that he had a 46-year-old son, who's now 47, uh, that he never knew about. And so I called Dana. She texted and said, do you want me to come take pictures? And I called and I said, yes, come take the pictures. <laughs> and it's just very exciting to, uh, to have those. And it was their first meeting. They had known each other, what, I think a day and a half. Maybe, yeah. At, At most. Point, yeah. At most. Do you think they look alike? Mm. Yeah, they, they, they look related, I think. And you know, that's one of the joys of my job is I get to kind of be there at some important moments in people's lives and capture important moments. <laughs> so this was... Um, yes, this is... <laughs> exactly. We did some formal portraits, but I don't know. It, I was having a little trouble getting to where I wanted to be in the studio, so out we went, and this was um, an image that we captured for newly designed, or newly, I'm sorry, newly body works. Um, just a couple things I want to add in about social media. I mean, I know for a fact that Facebook is preferred <coughs> posts that have an image. They have algorithms. They all have algorithms, and I suspect this to be true also on LinkedIn and others. So. I just want to make sure that when you're when you're doing a post, think about what image you might include, and there there are a variety of places to find them, including your own photo stash. So, 
Um, here's somebody we know. <laughs> Last time I hardly included anybody that we knew, so I thought this time I would go back and really let you know just how many of you I photographed. <laughs> um, making yourself remembered, obviously, is what you want to do with your new prospects, especially for somebody who might only come your way once every seven years. You have to make an impression that they will recall and make sure that they'll remember your face when they see it. And that's what I really encourage you to do, is have a portrait that you love, that you can make sure that you put it out there so that every time somebody sees you, they say, oh yeah, that's so-and-so. They can recognize who you are. This is another um, portrait I did with friend Connor. I hope to get her to visit our group. She works um, in helping people with their diet also. this Her approach includes what she calls the modern Mediterranean diet. So we did a whole set of shoots based on her new cookbook and her new website. And giving, so I just wanted to put out there, um, how much did I talk? Oh, pretty good. Um, that my business, as I know a lot of yours, has a piece of it where I like to give back to the community. And this year I was so delighted that we gave Christmas gifts to um, the I Have a Dream Foundation because I've been working with them off and on for a while. And these are some photos. <laughs> They do a new class whenever they can raise the money. And this was, these were some class photos, the outtakes that I did for, for their new class. And probably I'll go back, this was a couple of years ago, so probably I'll go back and see how they've grown up. And won't it be fun to like get them as they go through high school? So um, in case you don't recall, we, Jackie particularly, we donated the money, but Jackie did all the legwork to gather gifts for family that was part of the I Have a Dream Foundation this year or so. And they are still calling us. And then I just had to include that because yeah. I thought it was funny. <laughs> and I don't know how to make it keep going on here, but... Do you want to take some pictures? <laughs> <laughs> He's still yeah. here, so I can do it. <laughs> I have it on my website, it just keeps going up. <laughs> do you want to take some questions? <clears throat> I would love to take some questions. How frequently questions? should we update our photo? Dr. Fur, mine from 20 years ago. Right, right. <laughs> 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 she did a great one on your card. Your card. I really good. feel like you know, if you're a woman and, and you shave your hair significantly, that's a good time to redo it. You really want to match what you're using as your photo everywhere people see it. Um, men can get a lot of a long, a little longer. Yeah, we really get by a little longer. But if you change your glasses or you change something significant, I would say that's a time to update your photo. Generally, like rule of thumb, three years, four years at the most. And uh, do you speak photos? What about videos? I know Google search pops videos first. That's yeah, any visuals. And videos are really important too. And I'm sort of getting into that. Um, I hope to be getting into it in a bigger way because I really enjoy the storytelling part of helping people communicate, so, but it is a big, important thing, and especially in your industry, I think it's really, as I showed you with that LinkedIn guys mm -hmm. video, you know, on LinkedIn, on your profile now, you can include photos, which I highly encourage you to do, so if you go to my profile, you can see what that looks like, I've included several <coughs> portraits, um, yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Now, with Perry, you said you made him look more mature, older. Now, <laughs> <laughs> um, can, can you borrow some of that? You yeah. that the What's interesting is that um, I think it's possible to still have a really authentic photo that also helps us look our best. You know, you want to look your best possible self. So it may not look like it, it's a fine line to walk, but I don't ever hear from people that I feel I've over photoshopped. But I do Photoshop every photo. And the only person that ever sees a raw photo that's not photoshopped is cl our clients when they come to, to pick their images. And after that, I do photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought of bringing some before and afters, but I don't know who it would be, and it wasn't going to be me. Like, I looked at Ron and I was like, no. <laughs> 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 is it, so if nobody else, any other questions? Yeah. yeah. So sometimes on, like, Facebook, they reject a photo because it's not the right size, pixels and all that stuff. Is that something that you give us that's ready to go? Or? Yeah, when I give clients photos, I format them. Um, I definitely format their thumbnail for Facebook and other things. And um, 
can also help. And if you are having problems sizing photos that you really want to use, just give me a call and I'll help you. What is that size, Facebook? It's, it's interesting because they show at 160 by 160, but they ask you to submit 200 by 200, so it's a little tricky. So go larger, but not too much larger. I have a question. I don't know if you would have the answer in the process of unpacking uh, some of the stuff is really moist from the air and some photos stuck to glass. I don't know. I don't have a solution for that. I can look online for you. I looked online. I've I had that problem too, and what I did was just accept that that photos could be in that frame for the duration. I take a picture of it. You might try to scan it with the glass mm -hmm. in place, like clean the glass real well, and then yeah, or take a picture of it. Glass can be a little hard with reflection. Yeah, that's so true. scanning might. And there are of course ones that are not replaceable type pictures. Exactly. You want it in any form you can capture it. Do so at a high DPI. So if you take it somewhere, they'll know that. But if you have your own scanner, push the DPI as much as you can. Because you want to get as much data as you can in there. Okay. I did that at Mike's for a photo taken in the 50s. Mike's is and, really yeah, great. And they could fix it. They could get it off the glass, or they just did the scan? They'll just the scan. Either one, they just scan the photo. They removed the photo out of the frame, which oh. had been you know, done. Oh, that's great to know. Yeah. Yeah. How do you charge? Is it, is it like hourly or? or, or no, it varies. Um, a lot of the photos are of the headshots that you've seen here mm -hmm. are professional headshot sessions, and I do that for three seventy-five, mm -hmm. and that includes two digital, two images, digital formatted for however you want them, mm -hmm. and then people are welcome to purchase extra images for that. Um, the files for seventy-five dollars. Okay. When you go through that, it's going to be hard for you to win them down. Yeah, that's what I find. Most people Just wind up spending more like five something, six something. Mm -hmm. And it's because you spend all that time, you invest all that time. A lot of times women will have a makeup consultation too. Mm -hmm. So why not take as many as you love and then be able to use them to support your business?